a man who is not a politician, a man who cares, a man who loves America and all Americans, a man who works tirelessly for you. From the outset, it was clear that this would be about one thing and one thing only. More of a campaign rally than a political convention, this night was all about casting Donald Trump as the hero, the man America must re-elect to save it from the evils of socialism. Biden, Harris, and the rest of the socialists will fundamentally change this nation. COVID-19. But Donald Trump knows he's facing an uphill battle. Thanks largely to his mishandling of COVID-19, no sitting president has been as far behind in the polls going into the conventions. From the very beginning, Democrats, the media, and the World Health Organization got coronavirus wrong. The so his first task of the night? To rewrite history. One leader took decisive action to save lives, President Donald Trump. Never mind he downplayed the virus for months and more people have died here than anywhere else in the world. President Trump, in his eyes, now the savior. Trump is the bodyguard of Western civilization. They'd promised it would be a convention of hope and optimism. Instead, the standard Trumpian tactics of stoking fear and division were on full display. What you saw happen to us could just as easily happen to any of you who are watching from quiet neighborhoods. Like this dark warning from the couple who were filmed waving guns at protesters who they claimed had threatened them as they marched past their home in the aftermath of George Floyd's death. If you stand up for yourself and for the values our country was founded on, the mob, spurred on by their allies and the media, will try to destroy you. This is fires burned overnight and police threw tear gas at protesters in Wisconsin, demonstrating against the shooting of another unarmed black man by police. Several black speakers took to the stage to address the perception among many Americans that Donald Trump is a racist. It hurt my soul to hear the terrible name that people call Donald. The worst one is racist. Including the only Democrat to speak on behalf of the president. The Democratic Party does not want black people to leave their mental plantation. And we believe that Donald Trump is the president that America needs to lead us forward. Good evening, America. I'm Donald Trump Jr. And rather than use his prime time slot to humanize his father, Donald Trump Jr. instead gave an angry political speech aimed squarely at one man. Joe Biden is basically the Loch Ness Monster of the swamp. For the past half century, He's been lurking around in there. He sticks his head up every now and then to run for president. Then he disappears and doesn't do much in between. Do you believe in American greatness? But it was Trump Jr.'s girlfriend, Kimberly Guilfoyle, who brought the convention to a bizarre ear-piercing climax with hands waving and hair Hollywood still. Ladies and gentlemen, leaders and fighters for freedom and liberty and the American dream, the best is yet to come. It was she who epitomized the tone of the first night with speeches that were more about stirring up the Trump America base situation. than appealing to new voters. Now it's Melania Trump's chance to change the tone and bring down the volume when she addresses the convention tonight. Well, just before we came on air, I spoke to Elizabeth Harrington, who is the national spokesperson for the Republican National Committee. I began by asking her about how rare it is for a president to be making claims about a fraudulent election before the vote has even taken place. The only people who have refused to accept election results are Democrats. They blamed it on a Russia collusion hoax. Stacey Abrams still thinks she's the governor of Georgia when she lost that election fair and square. Republicans have had no problem accepting legitimate election results. And all we're doing is making sure that the results are fair and accurate and you don't have millions more excess mail-in ballots lying around that could be easily manipulated. Well, let, let me ask you about Mark and Patricia McCluskey. They were seen pointing guns at Black Lives Matter demonstrators in front of their house in June. They've now appeared, as you know, as speakers at the Republican convention. What message does that send to those who support Black Lives Matter and police reform? It means we must defend our fundamental rights. Those so-called peaceful protesters ripped down a private gate. They were trespassing and they were threatening their lives. We believe in the Second Amendment and you can defend what you've worked your entire life for when a mob comes 
to destroy it, and the Democrats are not there to do their fundamental job, which is to protect the rights of law-abiding citizens. That mob destroyed their property. They were trespassing, and they were threatening their lives. They were threatening to burn down their home. You have every right in America to defend yourself. The U.S. has suffered more deaths from coronavirus than any other country. There's no clear plan for handling the pandemic, is there? That's not true. We absolutely have fought this from the beginning, President Trump's leadership in shutting down travel. And I really take issue with using American lives as just a collective number. It's what the Democrats did. You know who's to blame for all of this, for in your country and for everywhere else? It's communist China. It's a regime that lied to the world, that misled uh, the entire world and said this virus isn't contagious. Chinese regime, whether it came from a lab or a wet market, they knew it was contagious. They shut down travel within their country. Let me finish. They shut down travel within their country while they had their puppets at the World Health Organization say, this virus is not contagious. Meanwhile, they were encouraging travel to Italy, which, as you well know, became the epicenter of the virus and the spread throughout the rest so the of the president world. Has so, yes, no it is very the much the Wuhan coronavirus. So the president has no responsibility for the fact that, that is you not have what had 170,000 people dead. I'm asking you, who is responsible okay, for the you... fact that your okay. record on treating the coronavirus has been worse than any other country in the Western world by a very long okay, margin? Okay, I'm, I'm glad you're saying you believe communist China's numbers, that they've only had 4,800 deaths. Do you believe that number? A country of three and a half billion people. I didn't raise their numbers. I'm people. raising your numbers. I'm raising, I'm raising numbers the United too. States. If death you're going to wield American lives, if you're going to wield American lives against an American president, I'm going to set the record straight about who is to blame for those lives. This president shut down travel when everyone said you can't do it, you shouldn't do it, and Joe Biden called him a racist. It was the correct decision. And you know what we've been doing since January? Mobilizing the private sector, getting treatments. Plasma, the convalescent plasma that was just approved on Sunday. Now Democrats are saying, oh, you can't have hope. You can't use that. This is the right to try president. This president will make every decision every single day to benefit American lives. He is not to blame. And Democrats and the media, regardless of where they are, playing politics with an infectious disease, I think is repulsive. And first of all, it's not true. Liz Harrington, thank you very much indeed for joining us.